Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, today we got a short kind of tips video that I'm going to give for you guys. Um, it's easier for me to do a shorter video because as a college student I am pretty busy right now uh, with classes and we're midterm right now so uh, everything's really hectic so I don't have all the time in the world to knock out a half an hour video on a big project I've been doing. But we'll have some upcoming soon once I get a couple breaks where I can put the video together and edit it together. But for right now, I'm just going to do what I would call like a Tom's Tips. Um, so this will be Tom's Tips number one. And um, today we're just going to talk about drill chucks and mounting drill chucks to an arbor. So today we got in the mail a brand new stub arbor for R8 to fit to a Jacobs 33 for a Jacobs um, keyless chuck and it's basically a, an Albridge style clone except it's got three jaws that close uh, it's got a Jacobs Taper 33 and we've had this sitting on the shelf for a while and we figured we'd get a R8 Arbor for it so we could get it mounted and get it usable in the mill. So what I'll go through is I'll go through mounting this and um, all the cleaning procedures, installing it and um, so we can have a permanent bond between the arbor and the chuck and we'll throw it into a mill put a dowel pin in and see how good our run out is and see um, how bad it might be actually depending on how well the arbor was made or how worn our spindle is so uh, let's get started okay so we're going to take the body of the drill chuck and what we want to do is we want to go through and thoroughly clean all of the surface that are mating for the taper now the jacobs 33 taper is pretty common size you could buy these arbors on MasterCar, MSC, you could buy used ones off of eBay. Our school went with a brand new AccuPro from MSC. Uh, it's not too expensive, it was the cheaper of the options, but for what we're using it for in here, this should do just fine. What we're going to do is, we're going to take a cleaning agent and I'm going to use acetone. And acetone works great as a degreaser because you really don't want any grease or grime or any chips stuck in the tapers because if they, if they have any um, small buildup on one side when the tapers go to meet it'll uh, cock the arbor at a specific angle and that'll prevent the arbor from running perfectly concentric with the drill chuck. So we want to make sure those two surfaces are clean. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to squirt some um, acetone inside the taper on the chuck and you can go pretty liberally with this. Uh, put enough acetone where you can clean the surfaces and we're going to take a clean paper towel clean out the bore and get any chips, grime, or dirt out of there. Now this is, as far as I'm concerned, a brand new chuck. It's been sitting in a box. Um, I do not believe it's been on an arbor before, um, but we will see. So um, this is a Jacobs model uh, JKT130-J33, and the 33 stands for the Jacobs 33 taper. So we're going to go ahead and wipe this clean. And we got that very nice and clean. Take another clean paper towel. And we will do the same thing with the taper on the arbor itself. Take the acetone, clean this mating surface, and I'm going to clean the back surface just to make sure that the, they mate together well. And um, with the taper clean, don't forget to clean the, 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 uh, the tip of the taper as well. And make sure to let these dry and try not to touch those or get any of the grease from your hands on those. Um, and then after about a minute, the acetone should dry off, so we'll just go ahead and dry that anyway, just to provide any extra drying. And we'll dry the taper on the inside of the drill chuck. Okay, and we'll let that sit for a couple minutes. Okay, so now with the two pieces dry, we're going to go ahead and just dry fit these together and just see how they'll feel. And just with a light twist, make sure not to push too far. Feels like these are going to make just fine. Now, when we're mounting the arbor to the chuck, we want to make sure the chuck jaws are retracted fully so the front, the face of the chuck um, is flat and, and protruding instead of the jaws. So with a good solid wood workbench or uh, any workbench, make sure this is resting on a flat surface. And in order to get the tapers to seat, we're going to use a dead blow hammer. This has little beads inside to put a force in, so the force is are put in vertically onto the arbor into the chuck. So what we're going to do is with one good solid hit um, we're going to mount this arbor to this chuck and the reason you only want to do one is because once the taper is seated um, it should be a good solid firm fit 
and if you start hitting on it a million times, you're just going to start wobbling out of the hole, similar to that of a Morse taper if you're banging on it too much, if you tip to one side, and um, we want to just make sure to get one good solid hit, so what we're going to do is we're going to make these two together, lightly, twist them in a little bit, make sure they're still fairly loose, and holding the chuck body, taking the, the soft side of the dead blow hammer, we're going to give one good whale onto this uh, arbor and get it seated. And with that, that arbor is seated. Now that won't come off, I mean, unless if uh, one of the students here uses it incorrectly, hopefully it should stay seated for a while. So now, with this mounted, we can go take this over to a machine and go and see this hopefully running. And we'll take a dowel pin or a drill bit and see um, how much runout we have. Okay, with the chuck now mounted, uh, we have it up, up in the R8 taper on the bridge port. Uh, it's a dual clone bridge port, I still call them bridge ports. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a runout test, and this is a half thousandths indicator made by SPI. I got the Noga set up right now, the 5 16th dowel pin in the chuck to see what our runout is. Now, acceptable runout for a drill chuck that's um, it's an import, it's not the greatest quality chuck in the world. It's plus or minus about a thousandth, and we have less than that right now. We have just under a thousandth total run out. Um, it goes from zero to about two halves, but just under two halves. So we're getting roughly 0 .8, 0 .0008, so about eight tenths run out. If I had a tenth indicator, I would show you, but this is what I got right now. But uh, again, just show you the run out on that. And that's just hand spinning this chuck in neutral. And that can account for either due to the tapers not uh, perfectly um, in good shape anymore in the machine or the bearing has a little bit of movement because if I apply pressure onto this outside edge, I mean this mill's not new so it's got a little bit of wear in it but still that's running pretty dang true still. So I guess that'll be a wrap and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video.